Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told out of voice radio, so today we're going to be having a look at a rather weird combination of Pokemon cards, which has proven to be rather good over in Japan. I am referring to the combination of Jolteon GX and Decidueye. I know, right? Not what I had written down as a potential best deck in the format, but it is one that has gone and done well over in Japan. It's gone and started winning, and I thought, you know what? This seems like the kind of cool, weird deck that we should be having a look at. And it is very much all based around Jolteon and Decidueye, shockingly enough. So Decidueye is our old friend who, I mean, it was amazing back in the Forest of Giant Plants era, but really been sticking around here and there since. There's many different things you can do with it, but the most important thing about Decidueye is the ability that lets you drop two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon per Decidueye per turn. And this adds up rather quickly. And this really is used for hitting the numbers. Now, don't get me wrong, grass double colorless 90 damage, especially with weakness, can be quite nice. And there is a single grass energy played in this deck, but really, the Grass Energy is there for Hollow Hunt. Hollow Hunt is a lovely GX attack that lets you put three cards from your discard pile into your hand. And ideally, you'll never even use it. The goal with this deck, very simply, is to rush with Jolteon and try and use Decidueye to back you up, to give you a little bit of extra damage. But there are going to be games where you're running out of resources, where things are going a little bit wrong. And if that happens... In comes Decidueye to use a bit of the old Hollow Hunt. There we go. Jolteon is coming out very, very soon over here. And let's be 100% clear, right? Jolteon is nuts good. Not quite as good after the release of Tag Team GXs as it was beforehand, when it was the best deck in the format. But still pretty gosh darned awesome. What it does for a single Lightning Energy is 30 to the active and 30 to one of your opponent's benched Pokemon. But of course, it's a Lightning Pokemon. So when we say 30 to the active, 30 to one of the bench, that's before we start adding in Electro Power. Electro Power is crazy good. It just does an extra 30 damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. And let's be clear, right? This adds up rather quickly indeed. It is exceptionally good. And what's weird is this deck doesn't even play Choice Band. This deck just uses Electro Power and you're off. Do please remember you can use Decidueye's Hollow Hunt in order to actually mean that you can use this again and again. So you can recover these if you wish. So that's nice kind of in the early game for a bit of early game damage. But we've also here got Headbolt. Two energy, 110 damage. But remember, that's 110 before you start adding in Electro Power and before you start adding in Decidueye. So if you were to add, say, one Electro Power to Decidueye, you'd be hitting 180. And that's stuff like Blacephalon and Rayquaza being one hit KO'd. You, with Decidueye and Electro Power, really add this up nicely. And then we've got the GX Attack Swift Run. Again, you're doing 110 damage for a Lightning and a Colorless. But you get to prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon, during your opponent's next turn. So, sometimes you're going to be using Hollow Hunt, sometimes you're going to be using that. But we do have a few other Pokemon here as well. Obviously, shout out to the Eevee here. You attach a Lightning Energy, evolve up into Jolteon, and you can use Electro Bullet turn one, going second. That's pretty sweet. And of course, we see Tapu Koko here. Tapu Koko is one of those cards that I like to refer to as nuts good. The ability, when it's on the bench, you can pop it in the Lost Zone, which means it's not even taking up a bench space then, and attach one Lightning Energy to each of two benched Pokemon. Every Jolteon that you use this on, i.e. both of them, becomes a single energy attacker. Tapu Koko means you just attach one Lightning Energy, and you're doing 110. That is the kind of speed and consistency in the early game, which cannot be matched by a non-Lightning deck. It's absurd. We see one copy of Orangaroo that lets you draw until you got three cards in your hand. 
Nice for mid-game consistency. One copy of Tapu Lele that lets you search out a supporter card. Good for early game consistency. And one copy of Zerka Tree GX. Now, this is one of those cards that's been teched into deck since it came out. The ability says that if you're against a Pokemon with special energy attached, you don't take any damage. You do still take other effects of the attack, but you don't take any damage. That can be used for blocking quite nicely, but we actually have a third possible GX attack here. Lightning GX, one lightning energy, look at your opponent's hand and add a card you find there to their prizes. So here it really is, if you want to recover, Decidueye. If you want to give them an extra prize card, but bearing in mind you can take a card from their hand and put it down, so that's also a bit of disruption. Zergatry. And if you want to smash while getting immunity, Jolteon. One of the best things with Jolteon is against the Boswell, the non-GX, they do 120 for one energy, but only on the turn where you've got four prizes remaining. So if you use this attack to KO a Boswell, Electro Power will do it, to go down to four prizes... They can't get a one-hit KO on you. Then you take another prize, and that's gone forever. Jolteon, really, really nice for using this here. If we end up then looking at the trainer line, we see a lot of stuff we would expect. We also see the four Electro Power, obviously. And we see a couple of Max Potion. Max Potion's really good because a lot of the time your opponent isn't going to get a one-hit KO on a Decidueye. And then you're just going to get it back to the bench. Max Potion works. Also very nice, incidentally, for Jolteon or for Zerkatry if your opponent tries to two-hit KO not using special energy. We see one copy of Netball here, which is really interesting. Essentially, it either searches out your Rowlet or it searches out your single grass energy. But of course, we're playing Volkner. And this is great because Volkner lets you search for one item card and one lightning energy, which means you can use it to search for Netball, which searches out your grass energy. So this actually allows us to play a single copy of grass energy and actually be able to get it fairly consistently which is kind of cool and then we're a little bit weird we got three one-off stadiums now thunder mountain is a given in any lightning deck it reduces the attack cost of any lightning pokemon by one lightning energy that's a little bit silly good and then we see two one-off stadiums that we really don't see very often we see one copy of mount lanakyla now some of you may have forgotten what this does because nobody really plays it. But it increases the retreat cost of each basic Pokemon in play by one colorless energy. The thing is, you've got all these Tag Team GXs like Pikachu and Zekrom running around. And they will all have their retreat cost increased. Whereas you're using Evolution Pokemon. And don't get me wrong, right? you're playing some basics as well. But largely you're using Jolteon GX, which incidentally does have free retreat. And this can really help you out here. This is kind of nice. And then we see one copy of Lysander Labs. Pokemon tool cards in play have no effect. Now, what's really interesting with this deck list is there are no tool cards whatsoever here. And look, your opponent might be playing their own stadiums. They might be playing Field Blower. And you're only playing one copy of each of these. Although, do remember, you've got Decidueye to get them back. But these can really make a difference. It stops your opponent using Choice Band, which might be the thing that stops them getting a KO. Or you might be uh, against a deck playing Spell Tag, but they don't get the extra damage here. It's a weird kind of card to play, but I actually really, really like it. And then if we look into the other parts of this deck, they're far more what we would expect. We see four copies of Lily and four copies of Cynthia, because they are the two best draw cards in the game at the moment. In the format, shall we say. So, you know, we kind of need them. Couple copies of Guzma to drag Pokemon off the bench and KO them, but also act as a switch. Four copies of Ultra Ball and three copies of Nest Ball. You need to get set up here. You've got your stage 2 Decidueye and you need all your Eevee and all of that. So we play quite a few ball cards along with the previously mentioned Netball. Three copies of Rare Candy, which seems a little bit low given that we're playing a Decidueye line. But firstly, we're playing a 3-3 Decidueye line. Secondly, we got Volkner. And thirdly, this is still a Jolteon deck. 
Decidueye is great as a support Pokemon, but make no mistake about it, this is a Jolteon deck. And then we just see one copy of Rescue Stretcher, which will allow you to recover your Pokemon, which is quite nice. I like this deck. I don't think I ever would have tested Jolteon Decidueye without seeing this list, but as it stands, I think this could be fun. Jolteon is fast and consistent, and with stuff like Thunder Mountain and Tapu Koko, you can essentially have free single energy Jolteon, which is all you really need. It becomes a really good single energy Pokemon. Decidueye dropping damage as well really is the icing on the cake. I think this is fun. But I would very much like to know if you think it's fun. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! But please do remember the most important thing as always be nice would you and then make sure you like this video subscribe to this channel follow me on twitter at the wasi and twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash wasi plays where we talk transformers and keyforge and any other games that take my fancy but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching PTCG Radio.